546. Well, it's the time of year every college bound student dreads spring, also known as college <laughs> entry exam season. Colorado has made some new changes moving from the ACT to the SAT. So, what does this mean for your students right now? Lauren McDonald joins us with a special guest to figure it out. Lauren? Hey guys, it is that time of year, time to test your students. And you know what? The SAT is coming up. It used to be called the ACT for Colorado, but we have switched to the SAT. And Ben Flores is here from Testive, traveled all the way from Boston, yeah. right, to give us some tips on this new SAT format. So SAT has been around a long time, but what does this switch mean for people here in Colorado? So for Colorado high school juniors, for many years, they've taken the ACT, which is a different standardized test than the SAT. This year on April 11th, all juniors in the state will take the SAT. They're both college entrance exams, but what it means for students is that they need to be prepared for the format and the pacing and the style of this test, the SAT. Right, and how is the style and format different? So the SAT uh, is a little bit, uh, I guess it's a little bit slower than the ACT. The ACT, you're really pretty rushed. Uh, there are some slightly different uh, question stems, types of questions. But for the most part, both of these tests are multiple choice, four sections, and they're kind of a marathon to sit down and get through. Right. And we're going to give you guys some tips this morning. You were talking with me earlier. The great thing about the SAT is that, you know what, if you go take the test for the first time, you don't get a score that you want. You can improve that score by practicing. You really can improve that score. Yeah. Along with your GPA, the standardized test is probably the second most important component of a college application. And it's one of the few things that students can actually change in the short term by using prep books, by getting a tutor, or by utilizing an online test prep resource like Testive, where we offer coaching as well as free SAT courses online. Right, and what can parents do to help their students get ready to take the SAT? Parents can hold their students accountable, right? No student actually wants to do this on their own. So parents can hold their students accountable. Often, that's gonna be a little bit easier if you hire an expert, you get some outside help so that you don't have to be the bad guy, right? Exactly. You find someone to help your student make a plan and then stick to that plan leading up to the test. All right, well, we are gonna give you pointers for this new SAT test all morning long. It gives me anxiety just thinking about it and I've been out of college for a very long time so for all of you that are looking to get into the school of your choice we're going to help you try and help you do that this morning back to you guys I know Lauren thanks the headaches now we're re returning they're coming sure. back with the anxiety Ugh. and the stress that was awful of taking An these awful tests. time but <laughs> worth it to get into school right <laughs> all right it is in 646 well spring has arrived which means college bound students are gearing up for that dreaded SAT taking tests is never fun but right now we're giving you tips to make it a little bit less stressful as Lauren McDonald joins us in studio with a learning coach Lauren Hey guys, good morning. This morning it is all about students and teaching them how to prepare for the new SAT test coming here to Colorado. It used to be the ACT, it is now the SAT, that is the standard test to get into college. And Ben Flores, you have traveled all the way from um, Boston to teach us the tips that we need to know for students to be effective and get into the college that they want. So we're going to do a little bit of practice and you're going to tell us how students can effectively prepare. Yeah, I'm a learning coach at Testive, so that's that's my bread and butter, is uh, helping students to get better at these tests. Right. Did you like the SAT? Uh, you know, I took the SAT and the ACT. Uh, I thought the ACT was too fast, and mm -hmm. I thought the SAT was too much of a marathon, so yeah. they were both hard. <laughs> I was never a good test take taker, but that's all right. We are going to uh, do some practice this morning, and I'm actually going to practice this question that you brought. I'm sorry to do this to you. That's I, okay. We'll do the best we can, right? Yeah. All right. This is an SAT writing question, which is actually a grammar editing question. So I should be good at this, theoretically. Okay, sure, yeah. So the first sentence that you read, students sit down and they read this sentence. Human infants develop the sense of touch first, and these remain both emotionally and physically central through their lives. And this highlighted portion, you can see there's no question. Students just have to decide which of these four choices should be substituted into the highlighted portion. Mm -hmm. Should it be no change, these infants remain, this remains, or our senses remain. So all kind of variations on the same thing. Right, exactly. Now I would say these infants remain. 
sure, it might sound a little better. You say human infants develop the sense of touch first, and these infants remain both, and so on. Right. So that's how a student would go about it. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll go to the next screen. Okay. Uh, if you were practicing on test of this is what you'd see. So no matter what a student is practicing with, they should have a way to review. Mm -hmm. So okay. So that wasn't right. Right, so that brought us to this next screen where there's a video to walk the student through the question. Very important. Very important. Whether you're using a prep book, a tutor, an online resource like Testive or Khan Academy, you should have a way to review your work. So what does that actually look like? You watch the video, and then what do you do? Let's go to the next screen and see. Right. So if this were me, what I would do is uh, I would write a note for myself, and this is what I'd have students do, uh, to explain what I figured out that I got wrong. So in this case, the answer was, this remains. Right. So what I wrote is a note here. I kind of preloaded this. I wrote, I didn't understand that this sentence contained the plural word these when it needed to contain the singular word this. If you remember the sentence, it mm -hmm. was, human infants develop a sense of touch. And so you need a singular word, right. this, instead of these. Makes but sense. you made a common mistake, totally common mistake. Right. Common, yeah. common mistake. <laughs> Can't make those mistakes though, right? You gotta, the point is you got to get them right. You guys are helping people do that at Testive, and uh, we are still have more tips all morning. So guys, don't let this SAT freak you out. We are going to give you uh, t some more tips coming up in a little bit. Back to you. It's no wonder I took it like four times. <laughs> <laughs> it was it miserable. Didn't really, it didn't really help either. Oh <laughs> the my more I took gosh, it. That's anyway. Right. It's always hard. Well, it's never going to get yeah. easier. All right. And the time has arrived for college bound juniors and seniors to tackle the test of their lives. Of course, we're talking about the SAT. Yeah, it's an important test, but there's no need to stress because we have the tips to help you better perform on this exam. And right now, Laura McDonald and her special guest show us more. Good morning, guys. Hello, good morning guys. You know what, a lot of students when they hear the word test, they start to get a lot of anxiety. Heck, when I hear the word test, I start to get anxiety, but you know what, we are helping you eliminate that all this morning because Ben Flores is here from Testiv, and you're an expert when it comes to taking SATs and ACTs, and you're really helping students kind of get a hold on that anxiety and helping them be successful for, you know, getting into college. So my question is, how do students prepare? You know, you're a junior, and typically that's when you should start taking the test? Yeah, so all Colorado juniors will take the SAT in school on April 11th, which is uh, great for them, uh, you know, even if they don't want to, it's great for them because it provides some momentum, right? They're going to take this test in school, and then we advise all students to take the test more than once. So they can use this as a first opportunity to get some familiarity with the test. They should start with a practice test. And then they should find a prep book, a local tutor, an online coach, like a testive, an online course that assigns them at least 100 questions a week. And then keep that energy going, uh, spending about two-thirds of their time reviewing incorrect answers and maybe only one-third doing new questions. they got to buckle down and see what they've gotten wrong. And but, understand. And understand why they got it wrong and then take that energy going forward into, I would say, the summer to take another test, schedule it, and prepare for either the May, June, August SAT. Yeah, all the students are probably like, oh, shucks, I don't want to do tests in the summer, but you know what, it really does pay off. That's when they have the time. We say that for students to really improve, they need about 100 hours overall of practice, and summer is the ideal time to do that. For most students, we'd say actually get started the summer before your junior year. But if you're a junior just getting started, not too late. Right. Do it the summer between your junior and senior year. And these standardized tests, they're not going anywhere. No, no, they're going to they're gonna be around for the long haul. So, yeah, you can't sit around hoping that, well, maybe when I'm a senior, <laughs> they'll just decide to do away with it. Exactly. <laughs> now, how many times do you think it's too many times to take this test? You know, if a student has taken the test three times already, and they want to go for a fourth, we usually say, unless you have a really specific reason, mm -hmm. where there was like one section that now you know you're so much better at it, mm -hmm. we would say three is about the max. Always take it at least twice, three is probably about the maximum. Right, and SAT fairly new to Colorado, but kids can still take the ACT. Yeah, so they're taking the SAT in school, so they'll have some comfort with it already, hopefully, mm -hmm. but maybe they won't have comfort. Maybe they'll feel so uh, opposed to it that they want to try an ACT practice test just to see if it's more right for them. But I would advise to families, stick with the test that you have some momentum in 
and that you have some familiarity with and sort of put your eggs in that basket. Exactly. And if people want to get involved in your program, Testiv, how do they do that? To they go to testiv.com and we have uh, free unguided prep that they can do on their own. We have an SAT online course that's free to Colorado residents uh, because of this change. Mm -hmm. And we have online coaching where they have some one-on-one -on -one help. Right. All right. So plenty of resources out there, guys. No excuses. You're just going to have to practice, practice, practice. And really, you said the more you practice, the better you get at the test, right? Yes. All right. Well, here's your advice, guys. Take it. And uh, we wish you the best of luck on taking your new or taking your SATs or ACTs. Back to you. I got like a 700 on my SAT. Is that, that's, I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good. You get good. more for your name. Yeah, I, I did get my name right, I think. I love filling out the bubbles.